What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Exploring New Jersey podcast. Today, we are in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and as you can see, we've got a special guest with us. Josh, what's going on, brother? I'm doing well. How are you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm good. And of course, as always, we're here with Scott. Back in another week. Yeah, and we're getting ready to jump into Asbury Park. So, um, Josh, man, so... Tell us a little bit about where we are right now. So we're in the northwest side of Asbury Park. And, you know, for those of you that may be a little bit familiar with the area or spent time, you know, there's kind of this like misnomer that you got to stay on the east side of the tracks. Right. And when I bought down here in 2015, um, this happens to be on the block that I live on. um, My realtor, who was local and had spent 20 years in the area, kind of convinced my now wife and I that, hey, you know what? Come over here. Check out the northwest. So we're about one mile from the ocean over here in the northwest side of town. We're kind of on the border of Wanamasa and Ocean Township. We're about a block and a half, two blocks from Deal Lake. And, um, you know, a buddy of mine was gracious enough to uh, allow us to use his space today. Yeah. And it's quite a really nice space and quite a really nice backyard. Um, these yep. avenue homes typically have a much larger lot than some of the side streets will have. And there's room, obviously, for a pool and, you know, additional dwelling units or a uh, pool, pool house. house. If you want to do a pool house, you can do a pool house. So that's where we're at today. Um, just to orient you, you know, we're about a mile from the dog beach for those of you that kind of go up and spend some time on the boardwalk. Awesome. Yeah. So if you're, for anybody who's watching on the video right now, you can see that we've got this beautiful pool behind us. We're in this amazing pool house and we're super lucky uh, that Josh is nice to his neighbors and uh, he would allow us to, to be here. So, <laughs> And for that, since we always give a shout out to wherever we are, shout out to Bernard, right? Shout Absolutely. out to Bernard. He hooked it up for us on this one. He's super, super nice, uh, nice guy. We only just met him, but we're definitely hoping to uh, hang out with him a little bit more when it's all said and done. So, all right, Scott, take us through, let's get some of the housekeeping stuff done. What do we got? Yeah. So basically, um, didn't realize how small Asbury Park is, but it's really only about 1.6 miles, uh, 1.6 square miles. Um, we are in Monmouth County. Um, we do have a medium or median household income of about 54,000, specifically $54,676. Um, population as of July of 2022 was just over 15,000 at 15,146. Um, Josh, you gave us those numbers on average sale price. If you could take that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. So last year, homes sold on average for $707,000. And when I pulled that data, I looked at condos and single family housing. You know, there's a lot of commercial here. There's a lot of lots. There's a lot of redevelopment occurring. Uh, What's noteworthy is that the single family homes had a much lower sale price and dollar per square foot than the condos, right? Because the condos, you'll see the buildings as you drive up onto Asbury along the boardwalk, like, you know, there's some two, three, four million dollar condos that will skew the overall numbers. So when you look at the average sale price of a condo, you're a little over 800,000. When you look at the average sale price of a house, you're in the mid fives. Mm. So, you know, that's kind of where we're at in terms of sale prices. And again, you know, about 168 single family homes or condos changed hands last year in 2022. And would you say that uh, a lot of people that are buying down here, this is their uh, full-time residence? Is this more seasonal investment properties? Is it a good mix? I think there's a good mix, and I think that the unique part about this is that if you had asked me five years ago what was occurring, I would have told you that it's primarily investment-driven. And by investment-driven, it's not just people looking to rent out the properties. It's people that are investing in their own future, whether they're buying a summer home for their family, something that they can leave for their children or, or you know, their extended family. Now, with hybrid workplace being what it is and remote work being as popular as it is, we've seen this surge of full-time residents in our neighborhood, especially over here on the northwest side um, and throughout all of town. And it's having its impact on housing prices as well as rent. Yeah. Do you see that? Because I know you work in, obviously you live and you work in Asbury Park, which is great, uh, great resource. But some of the other areas, like some of the surrounding towns, right? So we're not too far from some of the other beach communities. Do you see that that same thing happening there as well? Or you see this about on par with what you're seeing in other areas in here? Or is this a little bit different? I I think that it's relative, right? So, you know, you can go to parts of Neptune, which border Bradley Beach that are beautiful, similar size homes, and they're trading at a little bit of a lower price point, about $150,000 less. You know, you're looking at average home sale prices probably in the mid fours over there. Um, And you can go to Wanamasa, which has a really good reputation for like schools, for example, where we're seeing people move over to Wanamasa. So you're still close to the Asbury Park border. Those homes are like five or six. So as Asbury continues to increase in value and as housing, available housing units, there's kind of this 
you know, regionalized shortage of it, frankly. Right. Um, people are searching for other alternatives, whether it's by bike, by Uber, by scooter. You know, there's a ton of ways to get up and down the coast here. And we're seeing those other towns that are sort of ancillary to Asbury Park picking up steam, as well as the demand for those houses increasing, which is, of course, impacting pricing. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right, man. Well, listen, if you guys want more of that kind of information, Josh is, I mean, I always enjoy sitting down and talking with you because I feel like every time we get together, I learn something and it's not even just Asbury. 100%. Um, so, but that is a great wealth of knowledge and definitely somebody that uh, to, to um, connect with if you're thinking of maybe something down here in the area. But let's move on from, from the real estate part of it a little bit and let's get into some of the history and notable people that we have here. Um, Scott, what do, what do we got here? Yeah, so uh, the three most notable ones that we came across was Danny DeVito, um, which apparently has family right in this neighborhood as well. Yes, yep, in the area. Big, uh, always he, sunny he fan. Up, yep. he, he grew up in the area. He actually grew up on a house about two and a half blocks from where we are right okay. now. Okay, yep. no kidding. Um, we also have Wendy Williams. How you doing? No. Uh, she, was, she, she was back recently, and there's a street named after her. Oh, about really? Three and a half blocks from here. Okay. Yeah. So it's all we're we're in their neighborhood, oh, and yeah. of course, Bam Bam well, Bigelow. And of there's course, no, there's no Bam Bam Bigelow Road. No, <laughs> Bam Bam <laughs> didn't didn't make didn't, didn't reach that prestige. He but, didn't make the cut. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> we had to throw him in there. I'm sure there's like did. a. I'm sure it's like there's a good amount of people who are listening to this who are like. Who the hell is Bam Bam Bigelow? They're Googling him right now. But then the other half were like, yeah, Bam Bam <laughs> yeah. Bigelow. So he's a professional wrestler, and I'm sure he's done a lot of other stuff, but just one of those notable names. So yeah, it's a second home to Bruce Springsteen as well, obviously, as, cool. as we... As everybody likes to talk about, he spent a lot of his time here, and he still pops in from time to time. You'll be at Wonder Bar, and so he'll just randomly show up, play a song or two, and deck out the back door and go about his day. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Because so, we were talking that when we were looking at this, we were like talking about like isn't isn't Bruce from here or whatever? He's like furniture he's from here, but or something. yeah, it was yeah. funny that he he's actually West, yeah. has such an impact of this area, but he's not actually from here. Yeah. But no, that's awesome. So all right, and then some of the history that we have. Um, I think what's really cool is like the history you feel in this beach town, right? Like there's a lot of beach towns where they've been kind of really knocked down, like the little bungalows and stuff, the older homes have been knocked down. And Josh, we were talking about this a little bit before. So I think what's really cool is like, you see some really cool character in a lot of these homes and like a historical looking character, not just new rebuilt character. So talk a little bit about like the evolution of, of Asbury, kind of the history that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So, I mean, Asbury Park kind of came into focus in the late, late 1800s and really sort of had its boom during the roaring 20s and the 1900s. And so the architecture around here is typically Victorian or colonial. Um, and what was really interesting, just speaking solely on the architectural component, is that there's two things that happen that sort of made this place look the, very similar to the way that it looked in the 20s. And there was that period of Dark City, Gotham City, whatever you want to call it, where there was a lack of desirability here. And a lot of these older Victorian homes got broken up into multifamily houses, which preserved, for the most part, the exterior and the lot size of, of those properties. And going in them, you know, you'll see the original staircase, and then it might lead to like t you know, a, a wall, and there's you know, two doors on either side of the wall. But you will see remnants of the original construction in the housing. And the other thing that I think separates this from other beach towns was that this town was not as impacted with Hurricane Sandy as some of the other ones were. A majority of Asbury Park is not in a flood zone. And as a potential you know, home buyer or investor, that's great, right? Like it's a couple thousand dollars less a year you gotta pay. But it also helped preserve the history of the town because you know, 20% of it wasn't wiped out like you saw in other communities. So, and the other thing that we had mentioned, and now I'm talking about three, I know I said I don't I only no, say two, good. but no, you're good. Um, Asbury Park has always had a really robust fire department. And, you know, for those familiar with old oil furnaces, they would catch on fire from time to time. Mm. So Asbury had a great fire department that would come and put the fire out. So I've seen, you know, dozens of properties throughout town that had fire damage that may be 50, 60, 70 years old. And it's fine. It's structurally fixed, or maybe it's not, you know get your home inspection, yeah, right? right. Do your due day day day. Letters, right? <laughs> um, protect myself from getting sued over here. <laughs> but I think what's really important to understand is that this city is almost in a weird way preserved. And that attracts people that are architecturally focused and driven. And that creates spaces like this and spaces like you'll see downtown um, as you guys, I think we shot some video earlier yeah. that you're going to show of all the different kind of buildings downtown. And all of that kind of plays into something that just, it doesn't feel like 
the rest of the Jersey Shore. Yeah, because I, I would say a lot of the Jersey Shore actually feels very new because in the last 10 years with all the hurricanes, whether you wanted to or not, you were kind of forced to rebuild and modernize. So it is, it is pretty cool when you're walking down the street here and seeing homes that have that 30s, 40s feel of Victorians wraparound porches. Um, you know, it definitely feels like it's kind of like preserved in time, to your point. It, it definitely is. And I mean, you know, if you take a drive down 35, you know, once you get to like the Maniloke and Bayhead, Lavalette area, you're looking at like, I don't know, probably 70% new homes on the ocean side just due to the amount of damage that occurred, you know, back in 2012. Here, you know, I, I actually surfed here a couple of days after Hurricane Sandy and there was no power and there was, you know, the boardwalk had it, had its had its damage, but the boardwalk was able to reopen here one year after Hurricane Sandy. And for the other boardwalks that are more notable, that was not the case because yeah. of just the overall damage that was done. So it's definitely a unique part of the shore. Yeah. So let me ask you this, because a lot of times when we're when we're talking about areas like if you were looking for that more modern feel, can you still get that here? Or is this probably not the right town for you if that's what you're going for? Look, I, I think that I've been inside a lot of houses that have been modernized. There's a handful of mid-century modern homes as well in town. And I, I think that, you know, unlike maybe Ocean Grove, which is very close to here, that has a little bit more of a historic feel, um, within reason, you're able to modernize your home, especially mm -hmm. the inside, right? But if you want to put 25-foot lion statues and glass walls on your house, someone's probably going <laughs> to take take a, take a pause with that right okay. down in zoning. <laughs> no, I love Fair. the older styles, too. I think it just has such a – there's always, like, more molding and just more and, – and when you can do that mix between, like, the old style and sure. the new style, it's just – it's such a – such a cool feel. And now, Scott, I always throw it to you, like, as we're exploring different towns, like, what, what was your, like, feel of here in Asbury Park? Like, what's yeah, your impression so, of it? Just Again, similarly, this wasn't a place that I frequented. You know, I've been here maybe a handful of times in my life. And um, it kind of gives you that, that city feel. I, I perfectly described it as, um, you know, if you're maybe a young couple in your late 20s, early 30s, I could see myself, you know, living down here. There's tons of bars and restaurants. But... To, to Josh's point, too, that he commented on early, it's not that feeling of like, you know, you get that that big homey feel that you're going to come down here on your big family vacation. I'm sure you could, but I think that it's more of a, a good time with friends, um, you know, kind of like the younger adults, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, kind of city feel, maybe even like a Montclair type of vibe. Yeah. Um, what street were we on over there that we went to the uh, the pizza place? Cookman Ave. Okay, Cookman Ave. Yeah. And that had tons of little mom and pop shops. Yeah. Um, didn't notice any, you know, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a great part of, of this area is like, and you know, when you get super commercialized, right, things just kind of tend to change. And, but here you do, I feel like you have all the smaller locally owned and there's like a lot of like, it feels like art influence, right? It feels like there's very, um, like comic, we were walking through the the little indoor shopping mall or whatever, and it's like video game mm -hmm. store and like classic stuff and like comic books and music and like hand built furniture, hand built, yeah, fr yeah right, you know. Cool and then you stuff. get to the end, and there's a media company there that's just got like the doggy door there because they got dog, like you know. So my wife Ash and I, we we come down to Asbury quite quite often, and we've always loved it here ever since we really first started coming down here. And one of the things I feel like I notice about this area probably more than any other beach town that comes to mind is the dogs. There's dogs everywhere. And we're huge dog lovers. So that's like a huge perk for us too. Yeah. And what's really interesting about that is, you know, we have a dog beach where it's, you know, during the summer, it's after hours or before hours and off the off season, people are there all day long with their dogs that run free. There's yappy hour, which is pretty much an outdoor happy hour for people with dogs. You show up with your dog, you grab a beer, all the dogs play together. If your dog misbehaves, you get to put time out in timeout by a doggy bouncer. <laughs> really? Yeah. Your dog better be well behaved or he's going to the timeout. <laughs> Um, my dog maybe ended up there once. <laughs> Mine would be in there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and a lot of the restaurants incorporate dog menus. So like, for example, Kim Marie's has a whole dog menu. So you can sit outside, they'll bring water. You can order off the dog menu. I mean, there's, and, and that's not just there. There's other bars that have it as well. So it's definitely a dog friendly place. And, you know, some of the condo buildings allow for dogs. Some of them don't. Mm -hmm. Right. But as a whole, the town is definitely very much dog focused for sure. Yeah. I think that's great. Love it. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about getting around town a little bit and what that looks like. So um, we always, you know, obviously we're more focused in northern New Jersey. So we're usually referencing New York City. 
Um, and it looks like actually there is a train station, right? That will take you. So there's a train station in town, mm -hmm. which is awesome. And that actually runs to New York City, right? That'll actually, I mean, there's a way to get into New York City. I don't know the exact. It takes you into it Newark about, Penn, yeah, right? Yeah, it takes about two hours to go into the city. There's yeah. a lot of stops, you know? Yeah. And um, it goes as far south as Point Pleasant. Okay, so okay. you can kind of go up and down the coast on it, which is really nice. Do you find people ever commuting to the city from here? Is that infrequent? Definitely. Definitely. And yeah. I think one of the preferred methods as of late is to drive up to the Sea Street Ferry, which is about a half an hour away. Okay. And that can take you right into the east side or the west side. Gotcha. And there's a bar on there. There's Wi-Fi on there. It's a really pleasant ride in. You nice. know, I went in there to actually visit Bernard uh, a couple months ago. Oh, and, nice. uh, you know, it, it was about 40 minutes to, to get in. And it's a smooth 40 minutes. Those are big boats. You know, they're climate controlled. It's, it's really kind of a great opportunity for somebody who might be thinking of saying, hey, you know what? I want to live on the coast and I got to go into the city one day a week for meetings or two days a week for meetings. It's doable. Right? Yeah. That's not bad. And we could still drive in if you want to drive in. Right. But we won't quote you to anything. But do you know what the price was on that? Like 18, 20, maybe 20, 20 dollars. -ish, gotcha. I okay. Think. Yeah, so one it might way, be a good way, trip infrequent like trip, you know, not doing it every day, but, you know, it could be an option. Yeah, and when you think about, like, tolls and, and, and the cost of gas True. right now, I think it is almost a wash, and you can leave your car there overnight as well. So, oh, there are, you know, there's people that will take the train up to Long Branch and then jump a quick Uber over. I mean, there's there's options, depending cool. on what you want to do. Yeah, that's cool. And what about Philly? I mean, we're not really... Yeah, you're an super, hour. Yeah, are we really an hour yeah, from Philly? Hour from yeah, Philly. I guess we are an hour. We just came up from Wildwood, and somehow I'm like, how is it two hours from Wildwood? To, <laughs> but about you know, 100 miles. Yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah, yeah. I know. Wildwood. Once you see the sand, it all feels like it's kind of the same, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not realizing how far it actually is. <laughs> that Garden yeah. State Parkway. But, um, but yeah, so you do have people from Philly that kind of commute back and forth sure. that you're familiar with, that you have coming in, yeah. Sure, and I, and I think that, you know, again, when you look at the beaches... Um, you know, there's talk about Atlantic City, right? Like, that's been a topic that I'm sure you guys are going to explore. I feel like people have been talking about Atlantic City as the up-and-coming city sure. for 20, 30 years. It's like, pretty mm -hmm. far from New York. Yeah, it you is. Know? Right. And Very when far. you look at this, you're kind of in between Philly and New York if you had to kind of draw, you know, a, a line between the two and, and meet at the shore. So, yeah, you know, you've got major cities nearby. And they're obviously, they bring, you know, art, culture, and music. But so does Asbury. And yeah. I think that so a lot of the people that live in those major cities that are drawn there for the, the cultural side of it really enjoy their time in Asbury Park because of what it has to offer. Right. You know. Yeah. And what are some of the towns we have around here? I feel like we, for some reason, I'm, I'm not seeing them here. So we know we've got Neptune. Sure. What are some of the other surrounding towns just for frame yeah. of reference? So you got Ocean Grove, which is a really interesting historic town. Um, the land is not owned. It's church-owned land. So you do a land lease and you buy the property. It's no kidding. really kind of unique. Um, and then you have Bradley Beach, you have Avon, you have Belmar about 15 minutes south of here. Um, then, you know, you go a little bit west, you have Neptune, Neptune City, Wall Township, Ocean Township. And then, you know, north of us is Allen Hurston Deal. This cool. is probably one of the most northern beaches in Jersey, though, right? Uh, that's on the ocean. Yeah, definitely that has a boardwalk. I mean, you can go up to Keensburg, but that's technically on the bay. Gotcha. But, you know, if you follow the coast up, eventually it stops at Sandy Hook. Oh, and then right, it becomes right, the right. bay, right? So in between there, you have like Seabright, you have Long Branch. You know, Long Branch definitely is, is had its time in the, the under the spotlight over the last, you know, couple of years. There's a True. ton of redevelopment there. Um, so Long Branch is definitely another really big landing point for people. But, yeah, this is, for the area, pretty unique. Yeah. I have to. I also just have to give a shout out to some of my friends who I know listen to this. And when you said Belmar, started oh, throwing yeah. some fists <laughs> up in the air. Started, started doing some pumping. Yeah. Um, but no, so cool. All right, so awesome. And um, how about getting around here in Asbury? I mean, you can drive, right? It's, we drove pretty much around. It's not a not a huge yeah. town. I mean, you find yourself biking a lot. You know, the scooters around. I mean, they've got those. They don't have the electric bikes really anymore, right? We no. talked about that. So a lot of people do have e-bikes. I'm seeing those, but those aren't, you know, leased. Those are somebody's personal, you know, bike that they bought. It is definitely a bike community, skateboard community. Um, you can rent the scooters. They're relatively inexpensive to rent. And they're geofenced for the town. Mm -hmm. And there's like little points where you can drop them off. So there's one about a block from where I live. I can pick one up. I can run it up to the beach real fast. It goes like, I think, 18 miles an hour, 15 miles an Which hour. Which is crazy. It's yeah. way too fast <laughs> for me, especially maybe after a cocktail or two. But... You know, you get up there, you can, and you leave it there, and it deactivates, and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So, you know, parking is a little pricey. It can be up to like three dollars an hour, depending on the zone that you're in, 
or if you're doing a whole day, it could be like 40 or 50. I saw signs this past weekend for 40 or 50 yeah, the dollars to the park. parking lots, right? Right. So if I'm going up there, I'm going to take my own bike or maybe I'm going to jump on a scooter and, and get up there. Um, and, and you know, it's, it's pretty walkable too. Cause you know, it's a mile and a half. Yeah. You can walk a mile and a half. It's all flat too. Yeah, I noticed. You can get so. to any part of town. Sure. Yeah. And most of the town has sidewalks. Yeah. So. Good. Cool. All right. Well, let's, let's jump into the fun stuff. We, we usually do parks and recreation. We know, you know, parks are not really why we're here in Asbury, right? We're here for the beach mm-hmm. and, and some of those things. Um, so as you mentioned, right, we've got a boardwalk here in Asbury. Uh, so you, this is one of the beaches that actually does have a boardwalk. Uh, and something you mentioned too was like the lake. We've talked a lot about that or when we were here and just kind of exploring. I mean, tell us about the lake. Yeah, so Deal Lake um, kind of borders Allenhurst and Asbury, or if you go a little further west, it's Asbury and Ocean Township, Wanamasa, kind of is what we call it. So that lake allows for power boats, you know, smaller engines you see out there, which is kind of rare. But people will kayak, they'll do stand up paddle boarding. There's a ton of people that fish in it. You know, there's bass, um, carp, catfish in there. And what's very interesting is that it's actually connected with a flume to the ocean. So it, they can control the water level by allowing some of the lake water, if it's starting to flood or looks like it's going to start to flood, they open up the flume and they allow that water to escape into the ocean, which provides a little bit of security for those individuals that are living on the lake and around the lake. Because the water table is high. Like if I tell people, you know, if you go into an Asbury Park basement and you can stand up, it probably gets wet in the spring when it <laughs> rains a lot because we do have a high water table. Um, but yeah, the lake, I think, is something that's really underutilized. And um, as more and more people come down here, they you can rent kayaks over by 7-Eleven on Main Street and you can mm. go up and down on the lake. I mean, there's definitely uses for it that are pretty Yeah, because cool. we've been down a bunch of times and you when we were down here, you were mentioning the lake and I was like, I don't even remember that. I never think about like going to the lake or being at the lake around here. We just always go right to the beach. Yeah. Um, So yeah, I mean, what else are we doing around here? So we've got, um, there's some parks, right? You got Sunset Lake Memorial Park. I see here, uh, the paddle boats on Wesley Lake. Wesley Lake. That was the lake that borders Ocean Grove and, uh, Asbury Park that I couldn't remember the name. Okay. There we go. (laughs) That's Wesley Lake. Yeah. You can get the big swan paddle boats and go out on those. Um, and we got breweries. So yeah, let's, I got to give a shout out. So we're drinking the Sea Dragon from Asbury Park Brewing. Always looking for sponsorship. <laughs> no, all jokes aside, but this is actually, it's when we met good. you a few weeks ago when we came down here, we were spent a day at the beach. Hey, Josh, you're around. He came and we grabbed a drink. And I think it was the first time I had the Sea Dragon. It's really good. Really good. And what else is around here as far as, you know, breweries? Yeah, so breweries, have, drinks. You have Cane Brewery in Ocean. Yep. You have uh, Little Dog Brewery in Neptune. Yeah, I don't Be- think I've ever had that. You ever have that? No. Uh, there's a really nice woman owns that. And then you have uh, Beach House Brewery as well over in Belmar. Mm. Okay. And then we have some distilleries. We have the Asbury Park Distillery. How is that place? It's good. They make a great gin drink. Yeah. I'm not a gin drinker, but they make a really good gin drink. Cool. Um, and then there's, if you like rum, there's Dachshund Distillery in Neptune, kind of on the border of Bradley Beach and Neptune. So like right by the train station there in, in Bradley Beach. And that guy's like a, all he makes is rum. Cool. So, really interesting person too to talk to. He traveled the world, you know, back in his earlier profession. Now he makes rum. So it's good. If you that's go awesome. in there, you know. Hey, I mean, look at the pictures on the wall. Ask some questions, and you'll hear some crazy stories. Yeah, really nice guy too. That's, that's cool. Awesome. Let me ask you because I don't know if I really noticed too many. Are there any like rooftop bars around here? So yeah, there's a couple. We've got the Asbury Hotel, which used to be the old Salvation Army building, and it got completely renovated within the last six years, probably now. Um, it's a hotel. It they do music on the first floor. It's got a little bar on the first floor, but you can take the elevator up to the rooftop and have a really nice view of the town from there. That's cool. There's also a smaller rooftop area that's a couple stories lower where they do yoga. They'll have live music. They'll do um, screenings of movies. Like everyone will go up there and watch Jaws every summer. And then you have, uh, which is fitting, right? Yeah, right. That's perfect. <laughs> that's that's exactly what I want to jump in there. Jump yeah. in the water. Yeah, jump in the water Let's after watching show. Jaws. And then uh, you have the beer garden as well which faces wesley lake so you can go up there and, and look over wesley lake and then see ocean grove in the backdrop as well so yeah there's there's definitely rooftop bars and then there's kind of a off of watermark which is on the boardwalk you have a second story rooftop deck i think i saw that one kind of just looks over the uh yeah yeah the and what's nice about that is you can see bands at the stone pony so if you say. get up there early you can kind of sneak a peek at whoever's playing at the stone pony during summer stage and i think even good intro on that because we didn't really talk about that yet stone pony so anybody that has no idea what the stone pony is why don't you take us through that 
Yeah, I mean, it's, I'll take this one. Yeah, I'll take all right, this all right. One. So yeah. big. Fan, I mean, well, obviously, you're going to school me on it, but I'm going to start <laughs> off with my intro. So we you love. Probably know it better than me. Well, no, I mean, we love the Stone Pony, <laughs> and there's just something that is. I don't know. There's something about being there that just you know, it's the house that Bruce built, right? We mentioned Bruce earlier, and he d- did a lot of stuff there. But there's just something like kind of like gritty and casual but like really comfortable about the stone pony in my opinion as a venue like it's really cool being outside i'm wearing my revivalist shirt which is where i saw them i saw them here in asbury this is where i picked up this shirt a little ice cream to go with the go with the theme but That's fitting uh, i love as um the stone pony i think it's such a cool place to see a show and i think um like if it's a band that maybe you like would check out like we were down i mentioned we were in wildwood and like lit was playing like on the boardwalk like no offense to the guys of Lit, I'm not paying money to go see yeah, Lit, but sure. like I'll walk by, right, yes. and listen to them play, right? Like Sublime was playing with Roll Me the one time, and we just happened to be here, so it was cool just being able to be like on the boardwalk and kind of, you know, kind of being able to hear some of the some of the hits from the bands and stuff like that. So I love the Stone Pony actually, and. Go ahead. I was going to say specifically, is it an actual venue? Can you just go there for a drink, or there's got to be a concert playing that night? That's a good question. I mean, they have live music all the time yeah, inside. It's pretty right? much if they're open, they're going to have live music. Okay, and then gotcha. it's nice because it's like ha- about a third of it, maybe a quarter of it's inside. Okay, and they'll do like more regional acts in there, and they'll do fundraisers in there and things of that nature. And then they have a large outdoor space where you'll catch some of the more national acts. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. So that's like the summer stage. That yeah, they, they, they had a crazy, pretty crazy lineup. I was seeing some of the, um, yeah. you know, the names on the board there. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the inside, you, you have the inside area, which has the bar. And I've never been there unless it's been for like a bigger show. So I'm actually not even sure about that. If you can, I guess you, I don't know if you can just go in there and grab a drink. I don't know. I, I've never been in there unless there's music. All right. We'll try later. <laughs> we'll take a swing by later. We'll bang let you, on the door and we'll, let us in. We'll let you know. But yeah, so that's, you know, there's like the two areas of the Stone Pony, which is really cool. Obviously, the bigger acts are the ones you're going to hear outside. Sure. You know, the more local stuff is going to be probably more inside cool. and stuff like that. So big snow. And you, you had mentioned there's something going on with the summer stage, right? Yeah. So there's plans to move the summer stage to the back of the casino and the casino is one of the older historic buildings on either end of the board uh, on the southern end of the boardwalk you have convention hall on the northern side which has the shops and has a convention center there's some work that needs to be done to that building and then on the south side they've closed the casino they're doing renovations and they're looking to build uh, the early renderings have the summer stage facing west on the beach so you'll have your back to the ocean and it'll be kind of like stadium style seating so that's what's kind of in development or that's what the conversations are right now could cool. change, right? Yeah. Like I'm not sure else. how I feel about that. I mean, it's not, it's cool to have, like Jones Beach. You ever see a show at Jones yeah, Beach? On Long I know Beach? about it. I haven't or, been. Uh, Long Island. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, there's like a cool f- vibe to just having like the ocean behind you kind of thing. Yeah. But man, there is just, I, it, I feel like when I'm on that <laughs> <laughs> that just black top the, par- the parking lot the parking yeah. lot of the let's stone call, call pony <laughs> in the middle of the summer there's just something that feels like i don't know like old time rock and roll show like stuff that just it just feels very like you said the gritty hi- yeah but like historic even almost mm. like there's a lot of history on those on those in that parking lot well and that and it's not just that parking lot i mean i remember coming down here in like the late 90s coming to see warp tour Mm. And like surf and skate and like all these other shows that would come through and they would do it in Asbury. And I remember my parents dropped me off. I'm like, are you going to be okay here? You know, it was a different world in the late nineties down here. But I remember coming down for warp tour and it was a blast. I mean, it was, and it was that gritty raw. You're in a parking lot. There's stages around. There's, you know, temporary fencing set up and you're just wandering around listening to bands on different stages. Yeah. It has that feel to it. That's yeah. cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's cool. All right. Um, what else are there? There's also some other concert venues, right? So we got the house of independence. Yeah. We had some family play there recently, which is cool, being able to say that. we got family playing at concert <laughs> venues. Um, Asbury Park Convention Hall. Uh, Asbury Lanes and Wonder Bar. So these are some some areas that live music happen, right? Yeah, so if you were into the punk scene in like the late 90s, early 2000s, you know, emo indie, whatever, you've definitely probably ventured into the Asbury Lanes. It's very different now than it was. Um, the Asbury Lanes also went under underwent a uh, pretty significant renovation probably in the last... Let's call it five or six years. And they still do live music. They're still bowling. Yeah, and right. There's a bar. I was going to say, there is bowling. There I is didn't want to sound stupid, but there's <laughs> went, actually bowling there. I went and saw a show in Bold while I was watching a concert, and it was just a very interesting pair. Who was it? Too. I don't even remember. It was like four or five uh, years ago. It was a good it was, concert. It was a great concert. <laughs> <I'm yeah>. sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Awesome. But, um, and then, you know, Wonder Bar is awesome because that's where you're really going to see the local acts. 
yeah. you know, the people that live local that are walking to the venue with their guitar and their amp, you know, um, you'll see bands from like New York and Philly that are looking to try to break out of their, their respective areas will come here and play that bar. And they have live music almost every night of the week as well. So Wonder Bar is where you start in hopes to graduate to Stone Pony? Yeah, and you know, and there's some big names that play at Wonder Bar too. Yeah, and it's a Steelers bar, so on Football Sunday, you know, okay. they got a little Steelers section for those of you that you know aren't a Jets or Giants. I'm in, I'm indifferent about them, but <laughs> you're not a Steelers fan, are you? I am. You are. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Maybe yeah. just lost a couple of potential clients there. I'm but, sure uh, I lost you know, them all. What are you gonna do? Way to go, Josh. <laughs> but let's <laughs> let's stick on Wonder Bar. So, um, so Wonder Bar. So that is the bar that's across from the boardwalk, and it has the big clown, mm-hmm. right? Really. Tilly. So let's talk about Tilly. We went through this far. We didn't talk about Tilly. So he's the clown that you'll see everywhere throughout the entire Asbury boardwalking area, right? It's an old icon. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. So I don't know any history of Tilly. I don't know if there really is any. It's just, you you know, you're in Asbury when you start seeing Tilly the clown. It is like the unregistered trademark of Asbury Park. Yeah, so, absolutely. and so we love Wonder Bar because they have something called Yappy Hour. And I don't know what time it is that we're recording this. So we're just around happy hour time. So we're hoping that when we wrap this up, Cheers. we can go check out some dogs <laughs> um, and go see what that is. So, Scott, tell us what Yappy Hour is because now we've told you about it a couple of times. Yeah. So, uh, had I known, I would have brought my two dogs, but basically it's a social hour for your pups. And uh, didn't realize that there's actually a puppy bouncer, though. So, got to be careful be with behavior. that. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just a social hour where you go have some drinks and you're encouraged to bring your dogs. Um, and Josh, tell me if I'm inaccurate about this. You can't get in without your dogs, right? I, th- I think that depends on the time of year. Mm. But there's when it's really busy, they kind of want you to, to be there with your dog. And, and just for those of you thinking of doing it, you do have to provide proof of vaccination. Okay. Safety of all the other dogs. So if it's your first time there, they sell VIP cards. We can kind of like pre-register your dog for the summer. Or at least they used to. My dogs have not been behaving well lately. So it's been a couple of years since I had a VIP card. Very important puppy, right? You're dramatic. They're uh, good dogs. <laughs> They're good boys. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, that they also have like little pools set up. So if the dogs get hot, they can jump into the pools. Um, there's like some little obstacle courses for them to play with. They're, they don't really have toys there because, you know, people get sure. toy aggressive. Yeah. But there's areas for them to run around and they have a tiki bar outside. So it's definitely worth checking out if you're a dog lover like I think all of us are. Yeah, yes, we are. Um, so if you have a special dog and you want to get it some exercise and some socialization that's the spot cool and all and when you do pay at the door uh, my understanding of it is all that money goes toward local animal rescues and animal shelters oh wow so there's a cover charge and that is really you know a charitable donation so i think you know it, it, all in all it's a really great time to go to because you're supporting a good cause as well that's cool and i think something like that like it's that speaks to the kind of town that asbury park is right sure. it's like it's a comfortable place to bring pets which are a part of so many of our families right we Mm -hmm. love them like we love family members and then it actually goes to a good cause and it's also in an area where live musicians can come into play like it just feels so much like a a representation of kind of like what this town uh, can be about at times so um all right cool so bars and restaurants so they do serve food at wonder bar too right yeah Yeah. i think we've had food there yeah um but we always start with pizza right we talk about our our favorite pizzas in the area now we usually do a couple pizza pizzerias actually we've done somewhere we just did one we've done a a few but i fortunately for one of my birthdays i forget how many years ago that was we did tour de pizza so uh my wife actually brought us down here and we hit like gosh i don't know how many how many pizza places did we hit yeah it had to be like six or seven pizza places that we and uh, so we went to Tululu's today, which is really the point. So we went to Tululu's today. So guys, give me the rundown. What'd you think of Tulu- Tulula's? Well, before we jump into that real quick, was this a self-proclaimed pizza crawl or did like... Oh yeah, no. This oh, okay. Is, so we just made it. So Ash put it together. She found all the pizza places Got that it. we wanted to hit. And I think it was over two days. We hit so many. The only time I've eaten more pizza in a short period of time was when we went to Italy. And that that definitely rivaled it pretty pretty well. So God, just wanted to make sure, like, are we go are we coming back for a pizza crawl or hey, is it just we can find the itinerary. Cool. I'll do a pizza crawl whenever you want. We'll do yeah, Same we can problem. definitely find the itinerary. <laughs> but uh Tulula's is more than just a fun name. They actually have some delicious pizza. So what do you guys think of the pizza today? Oh, I, I love the pizza there. I mean it's one of my favorite brunch spots as well. You know, it, it does have a full bar. So, you know, if you want to get, you know, a cocktail or earlier in the day, it's a great spot to go to as well. Pizza's that kind of like that wood-burning oven-type mm-hmm. style that's got like a little char on it. 
and the ingredients are always really fresh there. It's very good. Yeah. yeah, it didn't feel like super heavy too. Like I feel like I could have ate a whole pie on my own. And well, still... you keep rolling them up like a savage the way you ate that slice of I, pizza. Honestly, there was too much flop on it, so I just I rolled it like a tortilla and. Yeah, it's not my proudest moment, but you know, yeah, it, we're gonna edit that out. Yeah, no, we're definitely not editing that out. We might loop it a couple Just of times. Edit me out of that. It's one bite, you gotta make the most of it. Yeah, it's one bite, you gotta make the most of it. Yeah, I don't want to be associated with that kind of behavior. Don't want to be but, known as sitting down with a guy like that. No, but no. yeah, so we always like to highlight too, like it's not like a, a pizza shop where you run and you get a slice or two, right? It's a you, it's a 12 inch Neapolitan style style yeah. pizza um the crust my gosh it was so it's like it's like what you expect in my experience at least in italy where it's like the neapolitan style where it's it has a little bit more of the flop so maybe you're not used to that maybe we got to get you out to italy um Uncultured. but it has the the thick crust on the outside and it's just doughy and soft but with a little bit of crunch oh, i was all about it it's like one of my and, favorite and we typically pizza. do just like a plain pie but we also did um there was like a a honey was that a pepperoni too yeah, spicy yeah. capicole. Yeah. yeah, it was really good though. But and um, it did have the hot honey, right? Yeah. Yeah, it had the hot honey, yeah. and then the other one was what? A... It was like arugula, and it was like a white pie. It was very yeah, good. so you could definitely get pretty crazy with it too. Like if you're looking for some different flavors. Yeah, yeah we had we have we have a couple people here with us today, so we got to do a couple of different pizzas. Usually mm -hmm. Scott and I just do the plain pies. So <laughs> we always say you got to start with plain because that's how you can really tell if a pizza place is good. That's true. Right, you yeah, agree with true. that? Well, and it's a good baseline too. You got to have an apples to apples or pizza to pizza comparison. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice, so, I like what you did so there. It's Tallulah's like was the. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I was just gonna say that's like what I say with ice cream because like yeah. vanilla is like the base of all ice creams. That's, that's my theory. I don't know. I get some pushback on Start it. Start there. <laughs> uh, but on that note, I was just gonna comment because we drove past Johnny Max. Um, didn't actually. I haven't. I haven't been there personally. Okay. Um, but you mentioned something about they just give away pizza. It sounds like. Yeah. So my office is next to there, and. Uh, I used to be a few pounds lighter when I started working there. But um, when you order a drink there, they give you a drink ticket. Okay. And then you can go up and you get a pizza, and the pizza's free. So as many Love pizza, it. little pizzas as you can eat is There's as many drinks they're as gonna you can serve. drink. You know? How is it? How is the pizza? Pizza's awesome. Yeah? It's like a great little bar pie. You know, they fire it up. You can add toppings if you want. Late at night, there's a huge line there. So I would maybe not try it on like 10 o'clock at Friday. But yeah. if you want to sneak in there at 1 o'clock on a Friday, you could probably get a pie pretty quick. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. I'm sure I've had Johnny Max. I just don't remember it. I'm sure that was part of the pizza crawl. Yeah, it I'm was. I'm sure that was part of the pizza crawl. So what else? What else are some of your go-to restaurants and food around here? Like if you had to pick, like give, give the viewers like two places that they got to hit if they come down to Asbury. I mean, if you're going to go with another pizzeria It doesn't place, necessarily have to be pizza, but you know, whatever you, when I say that, what comes to mind? So Mutiny Barbecue, which is right here on Fifth Ave. Shout out to Tom who owns that. Um, really, really good barbecue. And there's one Friday a month where they have dollar wings and their wings are really ridiculously good and they have a nice outdoor seating as well and you can byo there so you know you go there you can grab you know turkey brisket whatever you're in the mood for and then sit out back have a couple of drinks and you're only about a half a mile from the beach at that spot and then restaurant wise you know there's some really amazing places that have opened recently the saint laurent just opened um it's if you want to look at a really unique dining experience it's a prefix menu but it's very very well curated food um, an iron wheel on the boardwalk is, is definitely one of my favorites as well. They just do a solid job and it's kind of surprising given the volume that they'll push to that place. Yeah. The food is consistent as it is, Yeah, you know, and like the service may change if you're going in the off season cause you know, they cycle through people, right. but the quality of the food there is, has, has been pretty substantial, like substantially like level since they've opened. Whereas, you know, some of these other restaurants, they kind of take a little bit of time to get themselves together, but do they have was, live music there? They do not. No, okay. Iron so I'm Whale confusing not, Iron Whale with another place just up the boardwalk a little bit. Uh, but no worries. But yeah, we've yeah. Uh, we've been Iron Whale. And they have the outdoor seating right on the boardwalk, right? They do. Yeah, so that's yeah, it's that's a great, great place spot. to be able to watch for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. And we always want to touch on the school. So they tell me just a little bit about there's there is a, a high school here, right? Asbury has their own high school and middle school and elementary schools. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have our own school systems here. There's also some charter schools that have popped up. Um, and then there's also some Catholic and private schools in the area as well. Cool. So yeah, yeah. like we always say, do your own due diligence. Yeah. We don't judge schools, so everybody just figures out yeah. what's what's good for them. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're kind of coming to a close here. I mean, anything um, that maybe we didn't touch on, or maybe something that somebody moving to Asbury Scott, maybe something that you notice that you want to point out, or uh, Josh, maybe something that just you know something that makes Asbury what it is that maybe you would you would want somebody who's considering Asbury Park to know. 
I think the one thing that, and it's really hard to quantify, is the sense of community here. You know, you have people that volunteer to go out and take care of public parks and become stewards of the parks through, like, the Shade Tree Commission. You know, Tom does a great job with that. Um, you have, this is a town where people sit on their front porch, and those are becoming fewer and fewer and further between. And this is the kind of place where if you're, you're out walking your dog and you start talking to somebody on the front porch, don't be surprised if you end up like in their backyard for a cocktail. Or in their the pool house filming minutes. a podcast. Or in yeah. their pool house filming a podcast. Yeah, like, I mean, that's, that's kind of how I met them. It was just out and about. And people are really friendly here. They're very respectful here. And they're super welcoming. And if that's the kind of community that appeals to you and that's something that you want to be a part of, it's a wonderful place to live. It really is. I've been here since 2015 and it'd be really hard for me to ever give it up to be honest i could imagine what yeah no I, I was just gonna say i mean it, it is hard to probably get the the full gist of what you experience on a day-to-day -day basis but it just in the short time that we're hanging with you today you know seeing you interacting with random people walking down the streets that all seem to know your name um you know i don't know if you paid them or whatever but occupational hazard yeah it might be um <laughs> but no ultimately i definitely could see that sense of community there and even what you got going on tomorrow just i think that's probably worth commenting on too sure yeah so tomorrow um we are going to be and and pete and and, and ashley are going to join us and next year i'm, I'm walking yeah, we'll be here next in. year you're in um along with probably about 30 people from asbury park we are going to go down to Island Beach State Park, which is south of Seaside Park, and we are going to teach about 100 kids with autism how to surf. So this is something I've been doing for a number of years in partnership with POAC, Parents of Autistic Children out of Brick, Friends of Island Beach State Park, which I was a, you know, I served them as an advisor, and then um, with Mark Colino and Sea of Change Autism Outreach. So the, we're going to be on the beach tomorrow with the kids in the water, you know, sharing our love for the ocean with them. So cool. And um, it's a really magical day. So if anyone's interested in ever like volunteering or sponsorships, feel free to, you know, get a, get a hold of these guys and get a hold of me or reach out to me directly. And, you know, I'd be more than happy to put you in touch with uh, some people that are really making a difference out there. Yeah, no, we appreciate that. Yeah, yeah we're excited. This is our first time doing it, and yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be an annual thing. It will thing, not so. be your last. Yeah, I, I don't tell think that so. to everybody. Yeah. It's, it's a special day. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. we're really excited. And you're going to teach me how to surf tomorrow, too. So yeah, you're going to be putting in work tomorrow. That's yeah, sure. maybe the kids will teach you how to yeah, surf. Yeah, maybe they will. Yeah, I'm okay. sure. Yes, I'm sure they will. So, <laughs> so in, Pete, or Pete, yeah. in, in closing, what I always say here, uh, give me one reason that you'd live here. Give me one reason that you wouldn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I feel like every town we go to, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm going to, I'm going to live here actually instead now. We're up but, to about like wanting to buy like 10 homes already. Yeah. Well, that, that hasn't changed. That's, that's been pretty consistent for a while, but yeah, I mean, I would love here because it is, it's like, you feel, I think it's like, it's hard to explain. Like I was down here, this is maybe a little embarrassing, but I was here, not I, whatever. I don't care. I was here for a Limp Bizkit concert when they were here to, to play. Right. And so imagine I don't know how many hundreds of Limp Bizkit fans and not to generalize, right. But you know, Limp Bizkit fans get a little bit of a, you know, whatever, but it was just the point I'm trying to make is that it was cool that like so many people were here and they canceled the show, which I'm still not over Fred Durst and Westbourne and all you guys, you still owe us an answer as to why you canceled the show. But then there was just like hundreds of people who were just mad that the show was canceled, but everybody still acted right. Like it was still just like a, a respectful like it was just I feel like it's and I feel like the community puts that vibe out here right where it's just like you you just this isn't some other town where you can maybe kind of trash it and whatever I don't know I just I felt like the there's something about when you're here you feel you act right I don't know like that there's just pride in the area and it's not like a place that you would want to disrespect because you can tell people take care of it and that they have pride in where they live. So I think that that's really cool. Obviously living by the beach and the ocean, having the lake, which I know now I now know about. Um, one reason I wouldn't live here. Ah, uh, you know, I don't know. I really, I don't really think that I have a reason that I wouldn't live here other than maybe I couldn't afford it at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, I, I really like it here. It's definitely somewhere I would consider, uh, maybe relocating and, and thinking about living. Cool. How about you? That was a really long-winded way of no. saying that. I just had to throw in the Limp Bizkit thing. I, I was really bothering you. Yeah, I knew were, it. Were your jean shorts ironed and my, ready to go for that concert? <laughs> my jean shorts were not ironed, as a matter of fact, but they were on. Um, but no, then we were so mad, dude. We were at Medusa's. We're getting, we're getting ready to walk up. 
which rest in peace, Medusas, but I hear some good news. You guys are coming back. So looking forward to that. Um, but man, we were sitting there and my buddy texts me. He's like, how mad are you? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then I go on Twitter. It was literally like 20 minutes before doors open and they canceled the concert. So yeah, I had to take you guys off of my playlist, Limp Biscuit. You guys are not on my iPhone library anymore. So probably for Oof. the best. No, just kidding. I still love Limp Biscuit. <laughs> um, so uh, I would say that the, probably the reason I would consider living here is because it's one of those, uh, probably one of the only beach towns actually in New Jersey that actually feels different from the rest. Um, because again, to my point I made earlier is that when you go to LBI, Seaside, Point Pleasant, everything is kind of just being built up so quick and you're kind of even priced out really quickly too because you know, you're competing with these contractors that are buying land and then putting these multi-million dollar homes up so um i do actually like that that they just kind of preserved in time um but i think one of the reasons that maybe i wouldn't consider living here um is if i were planning on starting a family i do think that it might be a little bit more of a challenge i didn't notice too too much to do with young kids i could be inaccurate about that but i i got more of a sense of like you know a young couple living here having a great time rather than like you know a ton of things on the boardwalk to do with your kids like you might see in like Seaside or Point Pleasant. Yeah, I think that that's a valid point. I mean, there's Silver Ball Museum, which is a pinball museum. It's super cool. I mean, they have retro machines. They've got like the Simpsons arcade games from when we were kids. Can you play them? Like, yeah, you know it's like 10 bucks for an hour and it's unlimited play. And, and it's also BYL, like everything else in nice. town. So we can go there and have a party and hang out. But I actually went to a uh, wedding rehearsal dinner there. That's cool. And they rented out the whole place, and they got pizzas from Pete and Elda's and Neptune, which is another great pizza place. And uh, it was awesome. But outside of that, the boardwalk definitely is not the place that has, you know, shoot the clown in the mouth at the water gun, mm -hmm. throw the rings at the bottles. It is not that type of boardwalk. It is a boardwalk that has, you know, a little bit more of an upscale feel, bars and restaurants. Yeah, you can get ice cream. You can get pizza at Maruca's, which is a phenomenal slice. But to your point, you know, there are, there's mini golf course, like there's, there's things for children to do here, definitely. But I think, you know, when, if you're comparing and contrasting it to say Jenkinson's, which mm -hmm. has an aquarium, sure. you know, down in point, like that's definitely going to be like a little bit more of a family vibe if that's what you're going for. Yeah. yeah. So I'll ask you that you do live here. Obviously there's a reason for that. What's one thing that you wish that the town has that, um, you know, doesn't currently, that would be like your reason for not being here supposedly. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard for me. Like when you said that, I, I spent the last five minutes racking my brain about why I wouldn't want to live here. Um, and it's really hard for me to even think of a reason. But for those that live on the east side, I know that parking has become an ongoing issue. Um, some of the business owners have had some challenges with parking as well. And I know, um, you know, that the, the council members in the town and, and the, the city leaders have a plan for building, you know, some uh, parking garages in the future. But as it currently stands, it, it, it can be difficult to find parking. And as we touched on, it can be a little bit expensive to find parking. And, um, you know, not all the condos in town have parking spaces. Yeah. So, you know, if you're buying a condo, which accounted for 100 of the 168 sales last year, you know, there's a strong possibility that you may not have parking. And there's permit parking, and, and, and that's great. But as we continue to increase density to keep up with demand for housing, Parking is something that is becoming increasingly, increasingly scarce. So that's probably like the only negative yeah. thing I really yeah. can say. You know, it's well, listen, valid. you live here, right? I mean, I that's something that, you know, you And on the here. Northwest, shout out to, you know, Bernard's house. Th there's no problem with parking over here. Cool. 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 I think that's about it. Yeah. Well, guys, I think that pretty much does it for us here in Asbury. I mean, honestly, I feel like we could probably still just talk about all the different things. We could be here for, for an hour or two oh, hours, yeah. but we're ready to go have some fun. So <laughs> we're going to wrap this one up. We got to get to yeah, I'm jumping yeah. in the pool. Jumping in the pool. <laughs> um, Huge thank you to Bernard for for hosting us, allowing Absolutely. us to be here and, and record this. Thank you to, to you, Josh, for yeah, joining us it. and My pleasure. Uh, sharing all of your knowledge with Asbury. Because yep. uh, like I said, I mean, uh, is, it, is it offensive if I call it Asbury and not Asbury Park? There is an Asbury, New Jersey. Right. So, so I really but should to answer be... your question. No. No. Okay. So Asbury Park. Just to be very clear, that's what we're. That's doing. the real Asbury. That's right. We're here. <laughs> that's the OG Asbury. The OG. Okay. Yeah, Asbury, New Jersey. I don't know. No okay. one's ever even heard of that. Yeah. Right. You'll we'll have to do your next episode there. Well, yeah, <laughs> we'll have to go there. Just that we'll do the the both. <laughs> that we'll compare them. But no, seriously, Josh, thank you for no for hosting us, for sharing all of your information with us. Of course, if you guys want to learn more about Asbury Park and what it looks like to live here, uh, maybe to invest here or to come actually live here 
here full time. Uh, Josh is your guy. You can reach out to us. We'll get you in touch with Josh uh, or his information will be in the comments below. Scott. That does it, man. Awesome, man. Thanks for being here, as always, and Appreciate making the you trip. Guys. Your lovely bride. We were doing the Denville, uh, <laughs> the Denville episode. I was editing it, and I realized we were talking about your fiance, which is no longer the case. Oh yeah, so, I got got a ring now. So congratulations okay, so. to you guys again. It was a beautiful wedding. Thank you. Uh, and until next time, guys. Thanks so much. And if you guys got value out of this, please be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, let us know. Uh, the feedback you give us helps us put out a better product and help give out more information to the people that you guys want. So until next time, guys. Take care. Later. Welcome to the Exploring New Jersey podcast, where we discover what it's like to live, work, and play in towns throughout New Jersey. Join us as we visit these communities, meet the people, and of course, try the local pizza and give you a real-time opinion of what it's like here.